All right, Bobcats, in this lecture, we're gonna go over respiratory gas exchange. Uh, more specifically, we're gonna look at the transport of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So uh, the first thing that we need to understand is what's the difference between oxygenated versus deoxygenated blood? So when we say blood is oxygenated, what we're referring to, we're saying that the concentration of oxygen is greater than the concentration of carbon dioxide within the blood. Compared to deoxygenated blood, the carbon dioxide concentration is going to be greater than the oxygen concentration. Okay, so the next thing is, so first off, we've already discussed how within the alveoli there are the capillaries, and at the capillary, this is where uh, gas exchange occurs. So we are dropping off the oxygen and then we're picking up the carbon dioxide. So within this uh, capillaries, so oxygen is going to diffuse here, get into the red blood cell, and it's transported with the use of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin will bind to oxygen, and then from there it, it'll then get into what's known as the pulmonary vein because we're going back to the heart, and then from there it'll then get into, it'll eventually lead to the aorta, from the aorta, let me scoot this over. From the aorta, it'll travel through the arteries until it eventually leads to the body tissues. So once we get to the body tissues, the hemoglobin will kick off the oxygen. So hemoglobin is gonna be here. It kicks off the oxygen and then it diffuses into the body tissues. And once it drops off the, the oxygen, the hemoglobin can then, uh, it can also bind to a hydrogen here, okay? All right, so we're dropping off the oxygen there, but then what about the transport of carbon dioxide? So hemoglobin is also used to transport carbon dioxide. So once we're dropping off the oxygen and then we're picking up the CO2, so that'll, diffuse and then it binds to uh, hemoglobin. So then from there, it can then get transported and then we're getting it back to the alveoli. And so what we travel through, we have to go through the veins. From there, we then travel through, for instance, the, um, the vena cava. So the inferior, superior vena cava, or even the coronary sinus. We're picking up the metabolic byproducts, taking it back and then from the vena cava, it'll then get into the pulmonary artery. It'll eventually lead to the pulmonary artery. And then we then will get to the capillary bed again, to the capillary bed. From there, we will um, drop off the carbon dioxide. So the hemoglobin will kick off the carbon dioxide. So then the ca carbon dioxide will get exhaled and it'll eventually lead to the trachea. And then we can then exhale that. Okay, so the difference between, because I've said that hemoglobin can bind oxygen, it can also bind uh, carbon dioxide, but they're transported at different sites on the hemoglobin molecule. So oxygen, so on hemoglobin, the heme group, this is where oxygen binds to. But on hemoglobin, the globin chain, at the globin chains, this is where the carbon dioxide will bind to, to transport it. Okay, so now that we've talked about the first mechanism for a transport of carbon dioxide, the next thing is the next mechanism of transport for carbon dioxide. So there's something that, there's an equation that you're gonna get intimately familiar with. And so this equation is, so carbon dioxide plus water, is in equilibrium with carbonic acid and then carbonic acid can dissociate and we have something that's known as bicarbonate ion and then we get our free proton that's here. So for the transport of carbon dioxide, we already talked about using hemoglobin. Well, another mechanism is the transport of carbon dioxide using what's known as carbonic anhydrase. 
So carbonic anhydrase is the enzyme that converts it to carbonic acid and then into bicarb. So I'm going to draw another red blood cell here. So this carbon dioxide, let's say that this is what gets here into this red blood cell. Well, once it gets here into this uh, red blood cell, it'll then push the equation in this direction. And so as it pushes the equation in this direction, from there, once it gets converted, the bicarbonate will leave. So bicarbonate will leave, and then the chloride ion will then enter into the red blood cell. So this is what's known, so this is an ion exchange transporter. So then from this point, we're now getting it back to the alveoli. So same thing here, it'll then travel in this direction. And then once we get to the alveoli, the carbon dioxide, so you'll have bicarbonate, will then get back into the red blood cell. The chloride ion will then leave. And then from there, we're now pushing the equation back into this direction. So as we push the equation back into this direction, the carbon dioxide will then leave the red blood cell. And then it'll then travel through the um, trachea, get to the trachea so we can, we can exhale the CO2. OK. So let's write out the different transport mechanisms. So for oxygen, oxygen is mainly transported using hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide has a couple of different transport mechanisms. It can use hemoglobin. It can also use, I'll write it out, carbonic and hydrase. And then the last transport mechanism is just through the blood plasma. This is a slow process because we don't have any of the carbonic anhydrase within the blood plasma in order to convert it. Because, because here within the red blood cell, this happens um, rapidly, uh, converting the carbon dioxide into the uh, carbonic acid and then into the bicarbonate ion. OK, so that's going to do it for this lecture.